Everybody, welcome to the video. It's Monday, July 26th, and we're breaking down this short but sweet seven-game main slate that we have over on DraftKings. And with it being a smaller slate, we don't have an overabundance of options to talk about, but I do think there is a couple of targets that look pretty good for fantasy purposes tonight, plus Shoyotani is pitching, which always makes things fun for fantasy. So even though it's a little bit of a smaller slate, I'm definitely looking forward to breaking this down. And if you do find this video helpful in any way possible, Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you don't follow me over on social media, you know where to do so using the handles in the bottom hand corner of your screen. And if you want to help support the channel over on Patreon, get access to some extra content. Link is down below in the description for that. And since it's close to the end of the month and the first is coming around and Patreon will charge you upon sign up and on the first of the month. And if you do want to sign up and try out the content, I can make this week free for you guys as long as you continue your patronage on August 1st. So if you want to check it out, now is pretty much the best time to do so. You get access into my entire spreadsheet projections, optimizer, ownership projections, my rankings, cheat sheets, data sheets, Discord community, all that fun stuff, link is down below. Last but not least, this video is sponsored by Prize Picks. I'm sure most of you guys know what it is by now, but if you don't, it's daily fantasy sports simplified. It's just you versus the projections. There's no salary cap restrictions, 150 max contests. You don't have to compete against sharks. It's just you versus the props that they offer each and every single day. And if you look hard enough on the site, you can find some pretty soft lines to take advantage from. And as of right now, if you are a new signee, you can get a free money bonus up to $100 using code CPEN. That's an instant deposit match. If you deposit $100, you get $100 for free. So it's free money. Why not use it to your advantage? And again, you can go to pricepicks.com or use the link down below and use code CPEN. And you better make sure you told them I sent you. But I think that's it for the plugs for the most part. So without further ado, let's dive right into today's video. And as per usual, we'll start with the pitchers and move on to the bats. And like I was saying earlier, there's not an overabundance of great options to talk about, but I do think we have some solid pitchers here relative to the slate that we have today. But we'll start up top with Luis Garcia, $10,400. And this good matchup versus Seattle, I think makes him one of the better pitching options on the slate today, but you do have to pay a pretty penny for him. But it shouldn't be too hard to fit in the pitchers you want today and get the bats that you want because there's some good cheap bats and Really, the pitching isn't super expensive. Like, you don't have to play Luis Garcia. I think he's an overall safe option for cash games today, but you could always play Otani with Marquez, and you're not really breaking the bank there. But even with Garcia and Otani, I try to play around with some dummy lineups, and you can pretty much fit in whoever you want at that point. So I don't think there should be any concerns about roster construction, no matter what pitcher you use tonight. But anyway, getting back to Garcia here, fantastic matchup versus Seattle, one of the softest spots in the slate here. He's on the road, only a 3.7 implied team total against him, which I believe is the second lowest on the slate, only behind the Rockies versus Otani, who we're going to talk about in a second. He's a pretty heavy favorite. I do think the Astros stack does look pretty good tonight versus Seattle. So if you can go those five plus innings, you get that four point bonus on DraftKings, which can always go a long way. And if we're looking at his numbers this season, they're pretty solid. Now, his XFIP and Sierra are close to a run higher than his ERA, which I don't love because that means regression is coming, but I don't think that's going to come here versus Seattle because they're just one of the worst offenses in baseball. And he still has some solid numbers. I mean, a 3.9 XFIP, a 3.6 Sierra, 28.5% K rate, not a ton of walks, close to 8%, but at least it's better than Otani and Marquez, so I'm not going to complain too much here given the slate that we have. 155 ISO given up. Does have a lean to the fly balls, but only a 30% hard contact rate allowed and a homer per nine. And if we're looking at Seattle splits versus righties this season, they've been a little bit worse versus lefties, but they're still striking out 26% of the time, 158 team ISO, well below 300 as is their OBP, and a 91 WRC+. Plus. Also, Garcia is coming off a game where he scored nearly 40 DraftKings points versus Cleveland, so I think the good times are going to keep rolling here versus Seattle. He definitely makes for a fantastic option tonight. And then dropping down to probably my favorite pitcher on the slate, it's Shea Otani, 9200 bucks, and... I'd imagine he'll probably be the most popular pitcher on the slate. He had a fantastic game last time out versus Oakland, and he draws a very soft matchup here versus Colorado outside of Coors Field, which when you take the Rockies out of Coors Field, they become an absolutely awful offense. Like Their numbers this season are very, very bad. Some of the numbers do get inflated from Coors Field, but if you're looking at their splits overall this season versus righties, it has nothing to be scared about whatsoever. Now, they don't strike out too much, only 23% of the time, but on the 142 team ISO, well below 300. And WRC Plus accounts for park factors, and it's awful for them versus righties at only 71. Like, we're picking on Seattle a little bit, and they have a 91 WRC Plus to righties, but the Rockies are all the way down to 71 here. Otani, I love the strikeout upside. He's got over a 30% K rate, sitting right at 31.1 this season. The walks are always a bit of an issue for Otani, but when he's got his command in check, the guy is just a fantastic pitcher now. For the most part, he's had good games all season long. I think there was only one other start. I believe it was versus Oakland where he scored 10 points in that game. But besides that, in the Yankees game, I still have PTSD from that game because I, 
I'm pretty sure he didn't make it out of the first inning in that one, unless he made it to the second inning. I can't remember exactly, but I just remember he scored negative 14 points. Felt like he walked the entire team. He hit a batter. I mean, that was just a very bad day. It was right before the All-Star break. But besides that game and the one versus Oakland, the guy's been good. He hasn't scored, like I said, besides those two games, he hasn't scored less than 18 points. So I'm definitely liking Otani here quite a bit. Can't imagine he's going to struggle versus the Colorado Rockies lineup, especially outside of Coors Field. And he's got a nice 3.5 XF, a 3.8 Sierra. Like I said, high strikeout rate. Doesn't allow much power whatsoever. Gets a good amount of ground balls. I would say Otani is more than likely my favorite pitcher on the slate. I think that'll reflect in ownership as well. Plus, he's a decent favorite here versus Marquez. And then speaking of Marquez here on the opposite side of this game, I think he's a decent option versus the Angels. I wouldn't say he's my favorite play here, but at 8400 bucks versus a somewhat bad Angels lineup, yes, there's a couple of great bats there, but outside of a few guys, I mean, the bottom of this order is pretty bad, and I think he can be just fine here. Besides his last start in Coors Field, which he looked really good for a decent chunk of that game, then it ended up falling apart. He was on a hot stretch of having really good game after really good game. I think he's still a decent option here because the majority of the Angels lineup just is not very good. I know there's a 4.3 implied team total against him, and he's a pretty heavy underdog, but going up against Otani, especially with the Rockies bats on the road, I think it does make sense that he's an underdog here. Plus, the Rockies bullpen is pretty bad as well. So I think the majority of that damage, that 4.3 implied team total, would come against the bullpen. Not saying Marquez is bulletproof. He can always give up a run or two, but I think that'll come with a decent amount of strikeouts. Seeing around a 25% K rate this season, a 3.53 XFIP doesn't allow any power whatsoever at 112 ISO, has a good lead in the ground balls over 52% of the time, and only 0.7 homers per hour with a 32% hard contact rate. So he's kind of got some similar numbers to show Otani in some categories, and the Angels lineup, again, doesn't really scare me outside of a couple of guys, so I think he's fine at that price point. Wouldn't hate him as an SP2 in all formats. Then if you want to get crazy, you need some real expensive bats, and you want to spend down for a pitcher today, I mean, I think Michael Pineda is the only viable option here at 6900 bucks. Now, I don't really want to pick on Detroit right now. I know they kind of suck yesterday, but they've still been a pretty good hitting team recently. So it's not like we're just straight up picking on Detroit here. But if you need a cheap pitching option, he does technically draw a good matchup if you're looking at the overall numbers this season. Although recently, the past month or about the past few weeks or a month now, Detroit's been one of the hotter teams in baseball. So it does concern me a little bit. Plus, Michael Pineda has been kind of getting talked about as a trade target here. So... There's just some things that could negatively work against him, but they're still striking out over 26% of the time versus righties, a 160 team ISO, a 92 WRC+. Plus. Like, it's an okay matchup. It's not as good as it used to be, but still overall this season, they have somewhat struggled versus righties, and they do strike out quite a bit. And on the season, Michael Pineda, obviously not the greatest numbers out here, only a 4.2 XFIP, 4.2 Sierra, 21% K rate, limits the walks, which is good, but he allows a ton of power over a 200 ISO. At 1.5 homers per nine. I don't love it, but I think it's fine. A 4.4 implied team total against him. He is a pretty heavy favorite. If he can go five innings, I think he should be able to pick up the win. I love the twin stack today versus Matt Manning, but I mean, I feel like guys like Akil Badu and a couple of other bats in that lineup could certainly give him some issues, but at 6,900 bucks, if you need a cheap pitcher on the slate, I do think he is the best one. I'm not really trying to endorse Michael Pineda here, but I'm just letting you guys know he is here if you need a cheaper pitcher. But with that being said, I think that's it for the pitching, so we'll move right over to the bats. And similar to the pitching, where I don't think there's a ton of great options, I think the same can be said for the bats here, but there is a few teams that I do think stands out above the rest, so you'll see the majority of the bats coming from said teams. But we'll start up top with the catcher position, we have Mitch Garver at nearly $5,000, so he's a bit expensive, so if you're going up for Luis Garcia and Shoyotani, you might not be able to afford this expensive of a catcher, because we got some other expensive options to talk about. But I still like him here versus Matt Manning. I love all the Twins today. They currently have the highest implied team total in the slate. And they draw a pretty good matchup here versus Matt Manning, who I think will be decent down the road. But as of right now, he has not had the greatest debut in the big leagues. And it's only a 28-inning sample size, so I don't want to put too much into it. But he's got an ERA around 6. The X Open Sierra are not too far behind. Only a 10.5% K rate, 8% walk rate, 275 batting average allowed, over a 160 ISO. 337 Wilba and over a 40% hard contact rate. He's been terrible versus lefties and not much better versus righties. So I think we can use the entire lineup here for the Twins. So if you see a Twins bat tonight, there's a good chance I like them. And then dropping out of Christian Vasquez and Reese McGuire. Both guys are in the same game here. And I think this is one of the better games to target overall as Thomas Hatch and Nick Pavetta. So Thomas Hatch has not made a big league start yet. He's been decent in the minors in AAA where I think he's been around a K per inning. And the ERA and the XFIP and all those numbers aren't terrible, but it's a lot different pitching in AAA than making a big league start here versus the Boston Red Sox, who have been one of the better hitting teams in baseball this season. So I don't have the highest hopes for him for his big league debut. Plus, it's a hitter friendly park in Fenway, so I like pretty much all the Red Sox here. And on the opposite side of this game, Reese McGuire, $2,800. 
This is simply me just getting a cheap piece of exposure to an offense that I like quite a bit tonight. Nick Pavetta can be a solid pitcher at times, but he's very hot and cold. Like, he has a good strikeout rate, but he gives up plenty of power. He can walk some guys, so I personally prefer the Blue Jays here. He kind of struggled in his last start versus them, and the Blue Jays is just one of the best offenses in baseball, and this game can certainly pop off. So, if you want to stack the Red Sox, you want to stack the Blue Jays, I have no issue with that whatsoever. Both have a team total of five and a quarter. And then dropping out of first base, we have Vlad, $6,000, and when I was budding lineups today, Vlad just kept popping up for me in my optimizer. He's just far and away the best player at this position, and Relative to the other positions, I think we can spend out a little bit in the outfield. Shortstop, we might have to spend up, but I think you can make a, I think you can make it a focal point to spend up at first base today. So Vlad's looking like close to a core play for me. The matchup versus Pavetta, I mean, he's not the worst pitcher in the world, but he can give up power. And Vlad is just a power specialist, but he does pretty much everything amazingly well. 326 batting average a season, 453 WOBA, 341 ISO, a 190 WRC plus, close to a 700 slugging. Only striking out 17% of the time and close to an 1,100 OPS. I mean, he crushes righties, he crushes lefties, and Pavetta, he can be a power threat here, so I think Vlad's definitely a great target tonight. I know he's expensive, but I think you can make it work quite easily. And then dropping down to the other first baseman, we have Jose Abreu, 5,200 bucks. Not overly in love with the White Sox today. I know they have a team total close to five, and they typically do hit left-handed pitching very well. But just relative to the other teams that we have on this site, they didn't really stand out above the rest. But Abreu's always had great splits versus left-handed pitching, and that has held true so far this season with a 337 ISO, a 381 Woba, a 145 WRC plus. Doesn't really walk whatsoever, but he's always going to be a power threat versus lefties. And Mike Miner has been a bit hit or miss so far this season. And then Miguel Sano, 4300 bucks. Like I said, I pretty much like all the twins tonight. Now the problem with Sano is he's either going to strike out or hit a homer pretty much. I mean, he strikes out nearly 40% of the time. He's got a batting average below 200, but he does have an ISO around 225. So you're mainly just hunting for a home run here out of Miguel Sano. And I wouldn't be too surprised if it happens here versus a low strikeout pitcher in Matt Manning. Then dropping down to second base, we have Marcus Simeon, 5,300 bucks, just more Blue Jays exposure here. He's been one of the best second basemen in baseball this season with over a 250 ISO and batting around 275 on one of the best offenses in baseball. Corey Polanco, $4,100, a bit expensive here, but like I said, I like all the Twins, high implied team total, and all these guys do hit for a decent amount of power, so I think the Twins can certainly tee off here versus Manning. And then Kike Hernandez, he's also eligible in the outfield, so I imagine he's going to be pretty chalky. Just because of that dual position eligibility, plus he's pretty cheap and leading off for one of the better offenses to target tonight. Versus Thomas Hatch making his first big league start. Again, not a terrible pitcher, but you're making your first big league start on the road in Fenway Park versus one of the better hitting teams in baseball this season. I'm definitely going to have my concerns here, so I think Kike is a great target. He gets righties and lefties well. Then dropping out of third base, his teammate Raphael Devers, 5700 bucks. If you got the money for him, I think he's an excellent play tonight. He's been crushing right-handed pitching this season, and... Really overall, he's just been a great hitter versus either righties or lefties. But specifically versus righties, I mean, his numbers are fantastic with a 360 ISO, 654 slugging over 1,000 OPS. Does strike out quite a bit, but he's got a 51% hard contact rate versus right-handed pitching this season. So definitely think Devers is one of the better home run threats on the entire slate tonight. Josh Donaldson, 4700 bucks. I prefer him versus lefties, but he can hit righties fine. He hits for power, and I like all the twins tonight. Then Kevin Vigio, $3,500. If you need to spend down a little bit, I know he hits lower in the order, but if you're just looking for cheap exposure to the Blue Jays, because most of these guys are pretty expensive, I don't hate the idea of going to Vigio, even though his numbers aren't that great this year, but you kind of get what you pay for here. And if you're dropping down to shortstop, this is looking like a good position to spend up on tonight, because I didn't really like any of the cheap options. Obviously, there's a couple of guys you could look at, but nothing I really like too much here. But we'll start with Trey Turner, $6,100. I'm not in love with the Nationals tonight. I think Spencer Howard is a decent pitcher. He's got around a 25% K rate this season. Don't think he's going to go too deep into the game here in the Phillies bullpen. It hasn't exactly been the greatest this year, so I think you can target the Nats. But I'm not overly in love with these guys, but you can always use Soto, Trey Turner, Josh Bell. These guys are always going to be fine options, but I just didn't like them enough over other teams today to put a lot of these guys on here. But I do think they make for a decent contrarian stack. And Trey Turner's been one of the better players in baseball this year, batting around 320 over a 200 ISO, 367 OBP, 137 WRC+. plus. Plus, he's always going to be an elite speed threat to get stolen bases. So if you got the money for him, great. But I'm not overly in love with the Nationals tonight. More of a tournament play for me. Then Xander Bogarts and Boba Shett. Just depends on what team you're stacking. If you're stacking Boston, you play Bogarts. If you're stacking the Blue Jays, you play Bo Bichette, and it's pretty much as simple as that. And both guys have had fantastic seasons so far, batting around 300 with close to a 200 ISO. I probably prefer Bogarts over Bo Bichette, but I think both are fine options. Then dropping down to the outfield, if you're stacking Boston, you play GD Martinez. If you're stacking the Blue Jays, you play guys like George Springer and Teoscar Hernandez. I know it sounds simple and easy to say, but that's pretty much just the case here. It depends on what team you have more of. 
If you're playing cash games, I'll probably spend a little bit for guys like George Springer and Teoscar Hernandez just because they fit better in my lineups, and you can just get them at softer price tags. But JD's been great versus righties or lefties this season, batting over 300. I like all the Red Sox, and as for the Blue Jays guys, both guys hit for quite a bit of power, over 200 ISOs, and George Springer potentially leading off here, 4,800 bucks. Love him in all formats tonight, and the same goes for Teoscar Hernandez. And then dropping down to some cheaper options here, we have Max Kepler, 3,700 bucks, hit a leadoff donger yesterday, and Max Kepler is pretty much a core play for me right now. I hate to say that so early in the morning, but he crushes right-handed pitching for power. The batting average has been very bad this season, but the one thing he does very well is hit righties for power, and he's going to be leading off here with Luis Arias on the IL. He's at a decent price point. Matt Manning's a guy that allows a ton of hard contact, especially versus left-handed bats. The Twins are my favorite stack. I mean, I seen a reason not to play Kepler in cash games today. Akil Badu, 3200 bucks. I said I thought Pineda is a decent, interesting Cheap pitching option today, but I wasn't really endorsing him. I think a guy like Akil Badu is still one of the better plays in the slate in the outfield position relative to his price point. Only 3200 bucks. He's been hot recently. Last time he faced a righty, I think he had 25 points in that game because he hit a donger at some point. But 3200 bucks just seems too cheap for a guy that has been hitting right-handed pitching very well, batting close to 300 versus righties and an ISO around 220. So I think he's a fine option at that price point. Michael Burnley, 3100 dollars. So they're doing that thing with Michael Brantley again where they keep pricing him way down low. Like there's no reason Brantley should be this cheap. I mean, he's a guy that's hitting 330 this season with a 371 Woba. I know he doesn't have a ton of power, but he's got a 142 WRC plus, 377 OBP, barely ever strikes out. He's always going to put the ball in play, and it's a good matchup here versus with a team total close to five here. Not in love with the Astros, but for only 3100 bucks for a guy like Michael Brantley, that is a steal of a price tag. And if you're stacking Boston up, Jaron Duran, $3,000. He's been hitting second in the order. Like all the Red Sox here versus Hat, you get a nice left-hand ready matchup here, and it's a small sample size of around 20 plate appearances a season. Terrible batting average, but an ISO above 200. Then Trevor Larnack, 2,800 bucks. Kind of a similar play to Max Cup without the massive power upside, but he is batting cleanup for pretty much my favorite stack on the slate tonight, so I do have interest in him. 2,800 bucks is not a bad price tag for a guy batting cleanup for arguably the best team on the slate tonight. But with that being said, I think that'll be it for the video, so I appreciate you watching. If you found it helpful in any way possible, Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I do cover other sports as well, NASCAR every single week, and then the NFL season when it comes on. So I will always have a lot of content coming out. And if you want to follow me over on social media, I'm at ChrisPinnell16 on Twitter and CPen16 over on IG. And if you want to help support the channel over on Patreon and get this week free, since you do get charged on the first of the month, I can refund it for you as long as you stay signed up on August 1st. But you get access to my entire spreadsheet, projections, optimizer, rankings, ownership projections, and the Cheat Sheets, Discord community, and all that fun stuff link can be found down below. And don't forget this video was sponsored by Prize Picks. And if you're a new signee, you can get a free money bonus up to $100. It's an instant deposit match up to $100. It's free money. Why not use it to your advantage if you use code CPEN on prizepicks.com? You can use the link down below. But you just better make sure you tell them I sent you. I think that'll be it. I will stop rambling, and I hope you guys enjoy the start to your week.